similar questions that have come out since the last time the board made a decision on his option and what is most frequently is why are we voting on it again? And I would like to start by explaining that. Uh, my, my job as a superintendent is to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to weigh in. As I say everybody, I mean all the stakeholders have an opportunity to weigh in on significant <coughs> school improvement changes in our district. And hopefully those changes are for the good. So for a couple of months, we weighed in on option one and option two, and I think everybody here, I hope, is familiar with them. Um, at our last board meeting, we were presented with option three. And there was an agreed, I think we both agreed, uh, both the staff that presented and at least some on this side of the table agreed there might have been a miscommunication on that. With that said, the board voted, the board, the board voted anyway. And I'll tell you that uh, it was very difficult for me to go in the next morning to KRT and explain what happened. It's a little bit like if uh, Karen had been asked to put a resolution on consolidation Font 12 uh, on the posted board agenda for the next meeting, and it went to the post office and to the front of the school district, and that's all that saw it. And then that night they voted to do this big thing, like reduce the school from five buildings to four buildings, three buildings. And then uh, I'm pretty sure that I probably hear a lot about it from the staff, community, uh, parents, etc., for having done it that way. So more reflected on this and some of the problems associated with option three that have not been aired, like the problems with options one and two have been aired, advantages and disadvantages. Uh, well, I'm actually speaking to the board. Do I need a microphone? Would you like to be able to turn towards the audience? That's okay. Can I just turn to the audience? Uh, is that okay with you? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, thank you. In fact, one of the, our new board members, uh, Robert Gonzalez, suggested that we actually get a microphone up here in the future, that would be very helpful. That way we can talk, everybody can hear. I have moved chairs up in the past, but you guys just keep moving them back. Nobody hurt in the front row. Okay, so option one and two have been vetted, discussed, etc. And there have been some complaints that, why were we just given two options? And honestly, you weren't. You were given option one and two because that was the direction the board wanted to go at that time, and I, uh, after going through uh, process of trying to figure out what would give us the most money and help us the most and not hurt us the most. But there was also a section that said you can make comments. So there was a place to put option three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever you want. So you were, nobody was denied the opportunity to express their opinion on this. So I think the survey was right on it, though some people complained about that. Uh, so option one and two were submitted back in October, talked about the three, four meeting, and option three came up in the last meeting. The board, based on what was presented that night, on a 3 2 vote, I'd like to say 2.512 2. 2. or something, because it was a, it was a close, uh, close vote. In any case, um, and then I heard a little input later from our board members saying, you know, we really need a chance to look at this as close as we'd like to, and we look at it again. And so I will tell you that I went back to the staff who presented on option three told them we needed more information, at least as much as we had gotten in the first two. And I also asked two principals to weigh in on that as well because it affected their building, not in three. And so that's been done, and now it's before you. And I've been to the radio twice, and it's been in the newspaper once. Um, and I've emailed this out to the staff that's being considered. Now it's open, now it's transparent, now people have an opportunity to weigh in. And I see we have a lot of folks here, at least compared to normal. And uh, we're glad to have you tonight. So what I would ask you to do is just keep in mind that I am not, I do have a preference. Remember what I told you when we first started out? My preference is that we go back to the community and pass the bond for our schools. That's the best option. I'd like to wait a year, go back after it again, get the 124 votes and go forward. I work for the school board, and that's not their first option. Now, if it is, we can do the best match if you want to. I mean, I'm fine with putting this, tabling this, adding option four back on it, which is go after a bond. Uh, but if we're not going to do that, then we have to do something about the budget. Either have to lay off teachers or have to get rid of the building. That's where we're at right now. 
So we're deciding tonight how we're going to do that. And I hope that you remember that um, whatever comes out of this, I will support and work my very best to make sure it happens in a good way and to get as many people involved as I can. And I hope you trust me on that because I, up to this point, whether it be PLCs, whether it be scheduled, I've always gone out and got input from the community, from the teachers, and make sure I'm more thought. And I think they will, they will evidence that for me. So uh, that's kind of what I wanted to say to begin with. One of the other questions was, I was trying to find one. Get that one. That should be the next one up. So why is the board allowed to go back and change their mind? This is the law. And they need to have all the information before they make a decision. It's not the last minute stuff. They need to have it all and have time to think about it. So that's what's happening tonight. That's that's how I want to get started. Um, I did ask our two principals, I don't have anybody else involved, to take the next step, President Armijo, and discuss option three, <coughs> I think probably in a favorable light. I also have a few slides here to discuss some of the problems I have as a superintendent in trying to implement, and I think you need to hear that as well. High school, middle school, five minutes. <coughs> You're faking, man. I know you. <laughs> I heard you talking this yeah, afternoon. Yeah, look at the emotion. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> I don't think they can hear you in the back. Okay. <laughs> uh, I will begin uh, with option three. Uh, Christy, Miss Medina, and I did take an opportunity to look at it. We believe that it is doable, uh, not without some hiccups. Uh, we will have to probably because of the numbers increase our music program at the high school which reduces uh, availability for would be the three six schools four six schools <coughs> would be one of the issues hmm? four seven four seven yeah four seven and uh she speaks <laughs> yeah she came back and said she heard mm -hmm. uh additionally uh Looking at the size of the school with five grade levels and four grade levels, we would probably look at the option that's available to us uh, that would allow for two observations as opposed to three, where I would do one observation for my teachers and Ms. Medina would do the other and we would switch back and forth. <coughs> uh, option three would bring five teachers to the high school. Uh, we would still have to do some not major reconfiguration, but moving some classes to make the classes available uh, for the more seventh grade teachers, you know, ninth grade teachers, uh, so that we can adequately cover. There's still the question that remains, <coughs> and it's been a huge question this year, and something we certainly want to provide for next year, is the ability to offer physics and chemistry. Uh, <coughs> while all science teachers who are certified science 712 uh, have the endorsement to do so. I believe that educational malpractice to put someone in who's not necessarily capable nor has the coursework background to do so. Uh, so that is a primary concern for us. We talked a little bit about retrofitting, and we believe that the only major thing that needs to be retrofitted at the middle school would be the playground area and equipment. Um, we had previously talked with the other options that there'd be some to water fountain sinks, toilets. Um, <coughs> I don't believe that that's the case anymore. Um, so the major thing would be the, the playground. Um, I think fundamentally the conversations that Ms. Medina and I've had is that whatever configuration that would affect either one of our schools, and we believe that we have the capability to satisfy that, that we're involved in the educational program. 
what we need is a decision so that we can put in full effort into to planning that. Uh, because it becomes very intricate when we look at things like scheduling and things of that nature. So the sooner we have a definitive answer, the better off we are from our perspective on planning that. Well, one of the questions that brought, was brought up about the travel and t travel time, that is there going to be a lot of it or, you know? Well, that was one of the options that was presented coming out of the, the teacher committee mm -hmm. uh, was to do that, but I believe concluding five teachers uh, that we would be able to accomplish that without travel. Hmm. Well, well I do tell people <coughs> travel our band. Right. Don't travel. Right. Um, we do have students who travel from the seventh graders here for mock trial, participate in mock trial, and then that's that training. So if those are things that remain, you know, some kids will still travel for those specific classes. But there will be more traveling of kids not either, right? Because that's kind of a waste of They do travel. Yeah, the one model that was intended to benefit and that came from Ms. Mitchell's work, who is much more mathematically inclined and very visual and was able to do that. The benefit that there was in that model is that it provided for common planning for the A-12 teachers. And so <coughs> it did require a teacher to cover up and cover a fifth period in particular for eighth grade so that they could have that common planning here at the high school. But you're planning on putting the teachers here permanently? I think that would be where they're basically in like the math and sciences or I mean I know you can't say specifically but I'm just saying kind of in what uh, what, what subject areas are, would be uh, moved up to the high school we would do the five that they currently have that they currently have okay for main content areas plus help is required in okay. grade, so we would have all of that okay. the benefit we have with those teachers being here <coughs> is that it allows us an opportunity to utilize their certification 712 to help with some of the 912 instruction because they would have five eighth grade courses, a planning period, and then they would have one course that they could either do an elective or an additional content, uh, core content area instruction. So no teacher travel. Uh, no student traveling any more than they are now. And so that's doable. We've got the room to do it. We've got the collaboration. That's a positive aspect of it. Okay. But anything that comes to board, I think we would be able to accomplish, whether it's 7, 12, nothing. Uh, we do need to look at where the process is looking at our seven period athletics. Uh, with the additional students, will that continue to draw down our numbers in other elective courses? Or if we don't gain any students, it certainly does. I think mean, that's 50 students a day that are pulled out of that seventh period, seventh period next for elective. So we're not affected at the primary grade, we're not affected at the two three. So that's a positive. Our approach is can do what, what we're doing. Yeah, I have one more, and I'm sorry. But we did vote, the board voted to keep Athletic Hour last year, right? That was, is that correct? We did. Are, for this year. For this year. year. So are we going, uh, will we go through the same thing this coming year, or will it depend on, there you know, how they can. I'll, from my perspective, I did mention that you wanted a follow-up report, kind of a study of seventh period athletics and we're in the process of preparing to do that. You'll have information that if you choose to pursue that, it'll be available. Thank you. When will you have that prepared? <laughs> I don't want to ask tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, but we could have it at the February board meeting. It's not a problem. How about, how about May? May? 
I'm just saying that way you can look at it through the whole, give us a whole year perspective instead of just a few months. I'm taking with that and working with the athletic director is we're looking at a wide spectrum. Because then, as well right. As Right. That way it will give you the, you'll still have the summer to prepare, right? Yes. For the, whichever way it goes. Okay. Well, it seems like, I don't know, maybe the end of April? We've got, we've got spring sports. Yeah. What's going to happen during spring sports and what happened during spring sports? Yeah, is May too late? Yeah, well, yeah. Maybe April. Aren't they, when do they set their schedule? They like, do it in April? Mm-hmm. Okay, so we can probably do it by April. So it's then late. If we can. Probably April. April. Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah, by April, because you'll, you'll set the class schedule for next year, 1st of May. We'd like to do that too. But we would like, our goal, my goal, is to have students walk out of school with schedules so that if there are right. issues, we have the suburb to work on. To it. fix them, right. So, yeah, if we looked at that April. in April, then we can make a decision. Right. We'll do that then. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Can someone make an assumption at some point you'll let people weigh in? I'm going to get my part over with real quick. So, they talked about how this could be done from a community <laughs> standpoint. And only, I think you just glossed over the part where it affects the administrator evaluation. So, I'm going to talk about that in detail because that's my area. I have to be concerned about how can our administrators get out there and do what they have to do with this option and still do a good job for kids. So my first slide. Uh, go. Go. Okay, so with currently on the left-hand side, <coughs> this is actually pretty accurate, except at this particular point, our SPED director is not doing SPED staff, but we intend for that to happen next year. As far as evaluations go and observations, and there are 10 special education and certified teachers in the district, and so she would assume those responsibilities. If that happens, then this is what it looks like. RHS has got uh, 22 staff. The discussion here was if they let one principal go into the building and external person come in and evaluate, they only have to do two, correct? If you do it yourself, you have to do three. That's the requirement by the state. So this particular model shows what you're doing right now. You're doing three per staff member. 22 staff times three, 66 observations in the high school. That's not counting meeting on what we call domain one and four. This is just the part where you go into the classroom and look at how teachers uh, prepare the curriculum in the classroom design, uh, classroom curriculum design for their kids, and then present instruction. That's, that's kind of the domain two and three. There's more to it than that, but in layman's terms, that's what it amounts to. One of four has to do with how the teachers contribute to the building of the whole with each other and those kinds of things. So there are 66 that's done by the RHS, 61 by RMS. That's if you take the special ed teachers out. 36 for Kearney, Columbian, 33, Longfellow, 39. Now, I will tell you that currently Columbia Longfellow, there are some teachers who travel back and forth, so this may not be spot on exactly, but it's really close. For example, I don't know, the elementary school teachers may have decided that one of them is going to do the music teacher, and the other one's going to do the art teacher, and the other one's going to do the PE teacher, or maybe you all contribute, but that's within a teacher or two. 36, 33, and 39. So if you go to option three, this is what you end up with. 27 staff. Times three under the current way of doing it, maybe one observation because you're moving five staff up. And so if you go down through here, you see 81, 72, 33, 39. That's an issue that I have with this, this proposal. Uh, and so it's been suggested that that teacher, I mean, that principal can help each other by going into their building and doing observations for them. We'll come back to that in a minute. Let me show you the other options real quick. The other option that we did not uh, look at too closely. Uh, option two, seven through twelve at the high school. 
three, four, five, six at the intermediate school, and the rest of them are at Longfellow. And this is what it looks like. You've got about 34 staff times three observations. That's if you have two administrators at the high school under a 7 through 12 scenario, it'd probably be two co principals, or maybe a principal, assistant principal, but something like that would be worked out so that both of them get to share the responsibility. Ends up being 51 staff, uh, uh, 51 observations apiece if they do them themselves. 22 staff at the uh, intermediate school, that's what we're calling it, just pick their point if we were to go forward, 66 and Longfellow 57. Uh, go back one slide. So if you look at 81, 72, 33, 39, and then go back, go forward again, and look at 51, 66, 57, it's more equitable. If we're not sharing principles, this is more equitable. One of the options which was initially on the table, you'd have RHS, RMS stay the same and have Columbia Longfellow absorb Kearney. And actually this is the most equitable when it comes to principal evaluation of their staff. And somebody may say, what's the big deal with principal evaluation? They're in, they're out. Folks, it's not that way anymore. This state has decided that we're going to spend a lot of time doing evaluation in an important way. And they're training up principals to be better than they ever were at doing that. Okay, and they're holding everybody accountable. And so you can't just go in or pretend to go in like they used to do in the old days. Basically say, well, I've seen you all year, time and time, you've been good for 30 years, here's your evaluation. That is not done anymore. And it takes some time, and I don't, I don't know how to describe it. I, I'm doing principles now, I'm not teaching, but it takes quite a bit of time. I know that Dr. Fidel <coughs> uh, last year bemoaned the fact that by January something, he had to have all of these teachers done, and he worked his buns off to get it done, and to get it done right in a quality way so it would affect our kids in a good way. So those are the four options. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Here comes the problem I have. You might not be able to read all this. I hope you can because I put it in bold. But I have issues as a superintendent with administrative sharing buildings as far as uh, evaluations go. And these are the problems I have. I, I asked, basically asked the principal to discuss this. We discussed it 18 a little bit. I shared this with uh, Ms. All. This is an issue that I have with it. If New Mexico teach, that's the evaluation system, holds building administrators responsible for their building, their local education agency, I know I do, and I know the board does. I'm not going to go up to a high school principal and give him, hold him accountable for success or non success in his building as a building leader when maybe 10 or 15 of his teachers are done by somebody else. So why wouldn't I do that? I'm going to do that. Well, if you look at the way our special learning communities are designed, a lot of what happens in the evaluation for the teacher, uh, some of it has to do with the way they conduct themselves in a special learning community. For example, if you were to sit together at uh, a literature uh, committee, special learning committee, and one of the key aspects of that particular agenda is to be able to discuss in a good way instructional approaches that need to be done in the classroom that's not being done. If that teacher or two teachers or three teachers do not have a good handle on pedagogy, how to deliver instruction, or how to create classroom curriculum design in a good way, that happens when the principal talks directly with the teacher over an observation. And so there's a professional growth plan that goes into place. And this role plan, they say, you need to be here, here, and here for you to be an effective special learning uh, committee. And so if Christy goes in and does 10 of his teachers, he doesn't know what's going on there. Unless he spends an inordinate amount of time trying to collaborate with her, and then it's secondhand information. He's not seeing it head on. What about when a principal walks through the building, does what we call a walkthrough? I have issues with somebody who these teachers every day, and then in walks the principal and sees them for the sterile moment in which everything is prepared and ready to go, and yet the stuff that the principal sees every day is not part of that holistic approach to determine whether a teacher is effective or not. And that's what happens when you separate out the principal's responsibility of a building. 
and send it somewhere else? How do I hold that person or this person accountable <coughs> for their building success or not if they've got all these hands in it and they don't have control over what's going on? It's a little bit like saying, uh, it's like holding people accountable for factors that contribute to success or failure based on systems that are not existent for them. And if I were to ask you to feed your family with this much food and you need this much and you fail, and I hold you accountable for that? That doesn't work. Okay, so I had a serious problem. I've been in, and I've been on both sides of the thing. I've been out there, my first career, 24 years in the military. As a parent, no part of the education system except the HPPO person or going in and having people tell me how it's going to be done. Mm -hmm. The last 21 years, I've been involved in this quite a bit. And I know that principals need to be in charge of their building and they need to be doing the observation evaluation for teachers. Otherwise, we spread this out. Even New Mexico TED tells us that this principal over here is going to be held accountable based on what happens in his building. And yet, if we take it away and give it to somebody else, his evaluation is going to look like what happened in his building, and he has not even been the guy or the gal that's developed a special goal plan, the goals, and these kind of things that teachers need to get better. To me, this is a serious issue. <coughs> Will teachers who are being evaluated by an external principal respond to the building principal? So I'm being evaluated by Christy, and he tells me to do something. I said, sorry, I know what Christy tells me. Christy's in charge of this other building. They say, well, professional teachers won't do that. I say, you're right. Sometimes we don't always act that way. Of course, the, the big, the big uh, the solution to this, go ahead, Bill. Go to the next slide. Just a moment ago, when Mr. Ware was speaking on the option of taking the eighth grade, without traveling or anything, he mentioned that it would only be five staff members. So his evaluation increase would only go up by five with like that this scenario. Team. I didn't have all of them side by side to count how many holes the administrators. But the idea of the middle school building being used with the school within the school. Go back. So why could we not look at having a co-principal situation at that building and allowing a principal to remain over the elementary and a principal to stay okay. over the, the middle school? You're talking about the, allowing the principal to come in basically kind of control <coughs> that keep it in place until well, somebody does evaluation? Is that no, I'm saying one of your options for the high school on option two or option one was to have two principals at the high school building if we move seven through twelve. So if Mr. Ware is only absorbing five with the model of eight through twelve, and we're having a school within a school, why don't we visit having a middle school principal and an elementary? They're sharing a building, but they're not necessarily needing to share their administrators. So are you thinking that this model that they approved by the board is option three is actually allowing the middle school principal to continue to have? The eighth grade is part of her responsibility or his responsibility, is that what you're thinking? No. Well, once the, the eighth grade goes up there, they go on to the high school principal. That's already what I just said. Well, that's five times three, that's 15 more, and five left for somebody else. There's 85 teachers total that have to be evaluated. If you give him five, somebody else is getting left. I don't think that's equitable. No. Now, it wasn't me that brought up the idea that we should be helping each other out by doing evaluations for them. It was actually <coughs> Ms. Medina and Mr. Ware. I, I don't like that idea at all for the reasons I mentioned. Um, so, and I think there's a valid reason. I mean, if you've no, ever I'm, had... I'm just trying to solve because the, the, the five would not have been successful in 15 is, I'm, I'm sure, it's cumbersome. But I'm not seeing in the other models how 
there is not going to be a Congress from something somewhere. Yeah, just but it's difficult not being able to see all of them together to count the number of administrators for the number of observations. So it's hard for me to follow. I, I apologize, sir. I should have made a spreadsheet for you, but what I was trying to do is make sure that I don't understand Excel a little bit well, but too much Excel works. But uh, I was trying to get it in a way where it's big enough for everybody in the math to see this as well. And if I put them all in one place, it might have worked in a spreadsheet, but I did not do that. So that's, that's my fault. But I can flip back and forth if you want. What happens is that option two creates this kind of a little more equity, 51, 66, 57. Option one actually creates the most equity, you know, but it does put a lot of pressure on uh, Longfellow, which I think is what a lot of folks have tried not, not to do. They're trying to create a Longfellow that's not crowded and intense with lots of students and maybe even right at the verge of the PSSA standards. I think that's what we're trying to get done with option three, and I think that's commendable. Um, I know that teacher evaluation is like supposed to be subjective and biased. The New Mexico Public oh, yeah. Education yeah. Department has a case evaluator that can come to our district. Have we and did we not apply for this particular evaluator? And that could take us in a big problem. That person is available. I don't want them here. I want principal to be responsible for their building. Yeah, the only exception is this. If I'm a teacher and I think and Ms. Holland doesn't like me because I look like somebody that really angered her years ago and I'm biased and prejudiced, then of course we'll bring somebody else in to help offset the way you feel about it. I guess my question <laughs> is, is, have we applied for that program? No, I don't want it. I don't want an external principal or evaluator in the building. Uh, I want that person and this person, my principal, to be fully responsible for the growth and development, along with their staff, together, collaboratively, to make their school better. And I don't want external folks helping them. That's my professional judgment on that. Yeah, but you might need them to come in. What if uh, it is like that? You're going to need somebody. Yeah, we will. What if, what if I need like you? And I said, well, and uh, you say, well, well, this is going to be a good evaluation for me to evaluate you. That's not right. Okay, just simply because we didn't apply to that. We can still do that. I can still be done with that. We can do it in house. Uh, Ms. Holland was one of five principals, and somebody at the other end of the district, or let's say, for example, Ms. Uh, Ms. Sanchez here, or maybe even Ms. Martinez, the uh, Frederick, they can come in and do it in object. So we can do that in house, and we can also get somebody externally if we need it. Just because it didn't apply to this person doesn't mean that we can't find anyone to do that for us in those cases. <laughs> so far, I haven't had that happen, and we hope it doesn't. I hope everybody feels positive about their principal. Let me go to that next slide real quick, because I'm supposed to have five minutes, right? You're <laughs> over. I'm way over. <laughs> Some of those guys took in my minutes. Okay, next slide. So, one of the things Miss Medina brought up, which I did not think of myself, I hope you don't mind me, no one you her underneath the bus, young lady. So this is option three. Can another administrator watch kind of the building so that the instructional leader, the one doing the New Mexico Teach Evaluation so is out there able to do that, not being pulled in by complaints or discipline or, you know, crazy things that happen to this principal every single day. And the answer is yes, it can be. So if, for example, the board decided to stick with option three, which, like I, like I said earlier, I will give it my very, very best. Our principal said the same thing. We can do this. This is, do this is doable. Uh, it's preferable over administrators sharing evaluation. It's way more pre pre preferable. Excuse me. Uh, as you can imagine this, I will go back to Ms. Hall again. I hope you don't mind me using She's the principal. Uh, I'm the other principal. And she says, I've got 80 some odd evaluation observations I have to do, and you have 33. Or superintendent, you have none. Or Ms. Martinez, uh, you only have ten. I need to get to you for half a day, and I need to do a like, three observations. If you just need to take care of them for me and keep it off my plate, so I can do my job. That's <coughs> That way, the principal is not interfering with the instructional leadership of. I'm going to talk about the building principal, not interfering with the building principal's instructional leadership and plan to go forward, the building mission, vision, etc. And so. 
if that's what you decide to do, this is what I would put in place, and thank you, Mr. Dean, for thinking of it. It does leave other buildings temporarily unmanned. Um, can you imagine me being in a central office? Can you just go in a tank and Every time I leave, they tell me that uh, So I could go out and I could walk the building for somebody for half a day. Ms. Martinez could, Ms. Sanchez could. Uh, we have other principals that don't have, you know, on this option, I think Columbia principals got two grades, 12 teachers. They would probably have some time, I think at least more time, relatively speaking, than the others. So that could be done. So uh, these are the people. The SPED director, the superintendent, part-time curriculum director, and other building principal could stand in for these teachers, I mean, principals that have these buildings that are, you know, lots of teachers and they have to do a good job so that our kids get the very best teacher out there. This is a great, this is a great approach by New Mexico teachers. I think they deliver it in a lousy way. Terrible, terrible implementation, but I mean, when teachers are working hard to come here, and principals are working hard to bring them there together, the beneficiary is our kids. And, and that's gonna, as we get past our hard feelings with our current leadership of PED, I think we'll be in good shape. So that, what's the next? All right, so over here, I've got a few copies. The application has been submitted, there's two of them, option three and option two. I've already, already filled out. And I've added these attachments to it. I'm gonna tell you right up front that I'm against option three, and I'm telling Hannah Scandera I'm against option three for the reasons I mentioned earlier. But they get to decide, there's one more step. I'm gonna tell them the board approved option three, if that's what happened, that I'm against the person who's superintendent, and I'm gonna ask her to not do it. And it's in the narrative, and you can read it, and it's exactly what I said earlier. And then I'm going to basically uh, give them all this other stuff that we've seen in the past, it's been in this, uh, it's been in this uh, room in the, in the past, and we, we still it to everybody. Now, you say, well, Neil, how can you stand up here and say you're going to support option three 100% and still submit something like that? Because I asked permission. You know, I told them during my evaluation that if you expect me to get our district to this point, can you do this to me? To my principal? You want to hold me accountable? It's going to be almost, it's going to be extremely difficult. You just made my job exceptionally hard. And so I would like your permission to tell this candidate that very thing. So I would prefer to do option two or some other option than where I have principals running back and forth between buildings trying to help each other out to save a few bucks. So, uh, that's all. Let me I continue. Say. I'd like to talk about amongst the board if we're actually going to vote on this again. I guess my understanding of this is that we have the right to do that, and we, if, if we want to do that, it's fine. Everybody knows where I stand on this issue, and my vote probably won't change. Um, but I, I'm not one of these guys that likes to re-vote on things, so I think that I'm willing to concede that the vote was taken, the vote was made, and we are going to move on, unless somebody from the board wants to continue this. Here, here's the issue, though. By law, we're going to have to vote on this because it's an action item and because we called for a special meeting, so we, we are going to have to vote. Um, we, we'll just have to re-vote on it because it is an action item. That's the reason. Okay. Yeah. Now let me ask you this. If it comes up, there's only four of us. Yeah. It'll go back to the original vote. Okay. Yeah. It well, splits. we're staying with that. I'm not trying to take your time. I'm going to make a motion that we stay with option three, with option two being a second, the second choice, just like we submitted it the first time. I'll second that motion. And I would like to make one last addition to what I said. I think that we need to change how we do some of our, our uh, practices at these meetings. Um, the last meeting that we had was um, kind of a runaway meeting, I think, and um, things should not happen in those kind of processes. I think that people should have the time to look at things. We shouldn't be voting on an option three with 45 minutes of uh, prep time. And 
be that as it may, like I said, I'm not willing to concede um, what happened there. I just think that we need to look at how we operate in these meetings. Agreed. No clapping on that? <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 No, I think you, we need to re-vote. We are. Well, we're voting on what we are. Uber said to leave. So you're, you're yeah. voting on the leave? We're yeah. voting on approval of resolution 2014-15 directing application for option the original three. option, okay. which was option, option three. Option three. Option three. Just yeah. like we did before. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I'll vote nay. Okay, so it's three to one. Are you voting nay? Wait a minute. You're vo no. Wait a minute. Voting. I'm trying yeah. to understand what... We're, we're staying with the vote we had last time. Well, we had to read. We had we to redo it because right. it was on here. So right. I motion I was made was exactly the motion that was made at the last one. Whether you want option three or not. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'm going to vote the same way I did last time, and that was nay last time because okay. I voted two, for option two. two. Okay. So for those who don't understand, a two to two vote it stays the same. We did last time. So option three is in. Yeah. Okay. So. Quick refresher. Um, the state of New Mexico allows school boards without going to the community for a vote to uh, approve what they call bond or note. I think the technical term is note. Uh, to place uh, a revenue or, or receive revenue and to place a tax on our local community based on what they own in the way of personal property. This is just like we would do a gold bond, okay? If uh, we were going to pass a $7.1 million uh, bond like we tried to do this last year, we basically flesh it out for you and demonstrate it to everybody what it would cost them if they own $100,000 of personal property and it was taxable. And we've done the same thing with this. So the only real exception here is that the school board has the authority to do this and the Mexico statute. And they only get to do it, and only, for a specific number of items that are best for any type of It ranges from, let's say, it ranges from contracting somebody to give training, just for short term, to buying hardware in our classroom, uh, teacher resources to present instruction. It also includes um, infrastructure that the building may need to make sure that we have wireless or cable, depending on the circumstances. So a lot of things. So tonight the board is faced with a decision on whether they want to approve some or all of the uh, list that uh, superintendent, administrators, and teachers have submitted and resubmitted. And we, I want you to know that the process included uh, getting your input getting the administrative input, and then we went out, and based on the recommendation of the board, we asked Mr. Richard Kuhn, he spent several hours with us on this, give us his input as well. And uh, of course, we have Mr. Gillardy as our tech director in the district here, and he had his input. So we put it all together one time, a little bit over a million dollars, went back to it, and we revised it. Uh, the million dollars seemed to be a, one of those numbers that people don't like to get past. Or go over. So we've got. We went from iPads to Galaxy Tab Four, that Galaxy Tab Four, and a little bit less stuff for our laptops. But we'll still get the testing done. So we've done a lot of revising till we got it down to about seven hundred, some odd thousand dollars for the entire um, amount. And then we have uh, we have we've broken it down into priority one, two, and three. So if the board wants to draw a line somewhere along the way and say, we don't want to do this much, we want to do this much, we try to make it easy for them. So before we get to that point and show you the actual list, what I want to do, and this is by law, I'm supposed to show the board what it's going to cost the community before they make a decision. So if you look at this, if you can, I hope you can see it back there. We spent a little bit of money on a camera or a projector that would show all the Disney films if we wanted, but Sometimes it's still not enough. So for the first uh, three-year maturity, you can only go five years, no more than five years on this particular approach. So we can do something less. We can do one year, two years, three years. So we put a three-year up and a five-year. 
for a three-year maturity for option one, which is $430,000. That takes care of pretty much uh, what teachers need in their classrooms and what students need for testing and a little bit other stuff. And so the current rate at $100,000 of residential value or personal property value, uh, the impact is shown here. And so 2017 would be, looks like $36.13. Uh, 2018, let's see how this dropped, didn't it, leader? This should be up here. 16 is 36, 13, 37, 07, and 36, 37. For the first option, if that's selected, that's what it would cost a person who owns personal property tax of taxable value, $100,000. If you've got the $200,000 worth of taxable value in personal property, it's twice that, three times that, or half that if you own half that. Uh, if you take on option two, which includes tablets for students, uh, it goes up to uh, $734,000. And the rate for the taxpayer is $60.67 in 2016, $60.20 in 2017, and 2018, about the same thing. And that's for $100,000 worth of taxable property. Uh, option three, just a little bit more, just got a little more stuff to it, so it's pretty much the same. $61, $62. That's with a five year maturity based on options one, two, and three. You go to five year, uh, five year maturity. Did I say five or three? Three on the first three. one. Okay. So for five years, same, same spreadsheet. Okay. Same amount of money. Four hundred thirty thousand dollars for the first option, where teachers get what they need, and we get the testing laptops that we need. Uh, Twenty-two sixty-seven for two thousand sixteen. It goes all the way to the two thousand twenty twenty-one ninety-three. For the second option for seven hundred thirty-four thousand. It starts at $3,703, ends up at $36, so about $36, $37 over five years. And then uh, the last option is about the same. What I want to point out is, uh, flip it over again, is that the, the end game here, we hope, is a, is a, we think, is a K-6 brand new building located somewhere, maybe near the high school, maybe somewhere else, and a 7 through 12 new building designed kind of like the way uh, Richard was talking about, safe somewhat separated from you know, 7 8 from the 9 through 12, done the way it's supposed to do, the way we've seen K through 6s and 7 through 12 work in the past. That's the ultimate goal. So when we go out and ask the community to pay taxes, we want to be able to come back to them at some future date for the, the money to build a new school. We have to have this stuff paid off. So a lot of this depends on when you want to go back and ask the community for the money that uh, Jackie was talking about earlier. And if you're willing to go out again in three, four years, you need to go with a three-year maturity. If you're going to put this off for another five years, you go with a five-year maturity. Whatever we do, we're also paying on the 2008 series bond, and it'll be that much more further down the road. I mean, I think we owe six and a half years still on that one. So if we go with a five-year, it'll be paid off about the same time as the 2008 bond. So if you decide tonight, maybe that'd be part of your decision making. Uh, so you have two things you have to decide on, pretty much. How much of this you're going to give to us? But actually, you can decide to give none of it to us, which is, <laughs> or you can give us some of this or all of it for three years or five years. Those are the kind of decisions you have. So we have up here a list of the things that we're asking you to uh, approve, and I'm asking for all of it. That's my recommendation. And. Uh, it's there for you to look at. You can point at it and say, what about this? What about that? What's this? Whatever. Until we get through with it and then decide what you want to do. So we're here to answer your questions. I'll get the principal's help if I need it for the stuff they ask for. Or Lita's help when she did the bidding, or not the bidding, but the price checking. And uh, I thought Joe was going to be here. Oh, yeah, Joe. So Joe can explain his stuff. So we're all, we're all here to answer your questions. And the floor is now open for your questions. <laughs> the parent staff. Alert, the alert now. I have checked on that since the last meeting. That is available at no cost. This is available at no cost, everybody. The, pro the difference between no cost and $1,200 is... And I realize that's negligible, but I'm just saying it is available at no cost. It's called Remind Me. That's a good point, but I wasn't going to say that. Let me just say <laughs> this. 
The difference between that and services, not in cost, in services is that this, and this is a pretty, pretty cheap software. What this does, it tells you whether somebody picked up the phone and answered it or whether it got to the right number or not. The no cost ones just send it out. That's it. We don't have any feedback on that. What we're asking you to do is give it $1,200 a year to be able to know who's getting it and who's not. That'll help us keep the information current. So, golly, Beaver, I had an answer ready for you. I feel good. <laughs> we, we thought that was a good point. Peter, can you go back to the three year payoff, please? Mm -hmm. This line here is I mean, supposed to be there's only two options up there. This one's supposed to be here. We yeah. enlarge the font and it just moves things around a little bit. I mean, it's one and three. Thanks for being here. You're only a dollar different. Two, two and three. Two and three. Okay, one of the principles, I mean, to me, that I would say we go with just the, enough the, the computers for testing to start with. Okay, that way the community doesn't get too upset about the, the taxes going up and so on. All right, then we'll move on to item B. I'll entertain a motion uh, for the resolution of 201503 education technology bond, public input discussion on upcoming education technology bond. Move to approve, but I think that we need to have an IT component otherwise. I think so too, because otherwise folks are going to, I mean, I, I, don't I know how much all this stuff and then it would be sitting there. And I don't know how much that needs to be. The superintendent is going to guarantee it's not going to be sitting on the show. Well, I think so. Well, no, but you know what I'm saying? Life happens, and, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to make stuff happen. stuff is on the shelf. I'm not going to do that. Neither are these folks. Well, no, and I don't, I, I don't think you would do it. You move to approve. I won't do it on the shelf. Just the resolution to be approved. Just the way it's written. You know, I, I, doesn't, I don't know. I, I just don't it doesn't know how realistic no, it doesn't it have it on there. You don't have it on there. You want a guarantee? You want evidence tonight? All I can give you is my word well, no, and their word. I understand. And their word. How many more times do we have to come back? <laughs> <laughs> Just ask. You can make a decision tonight if you like. Well, I thought you we had to have, like, place an we had to have X there. number of hearings. Well, hey, tonight you're taking care of two of them at one time. I hope I, I, didn't, make, I didn't make that clear in my email. So you've done the first one. The next two can be done on the same night, according to Pat I, that Cutting McCarthy, and that's what you're doing tonight. And then the next two things that happen are it's going to be publicized that you've done it, okay? And the last thing you do is you're going to close out. And, uh, yeah. So we're not actually voting on, on this option? Oh, yes, no. you are. Option. Yeah. Yes, you are. It's not, what about the three versus written, five? We have to decide that tonight, too? Yes. What's that? We decide the three versus five tonight also? Yeah, you decide, you decide what are those options, and we'll put it in writing, and we tell the public we're doing it. That's required by law for you to tell them twice. But then, Three week to four week period. This is it. And then they, the next one is to for the public to put input into it. Or? This is it. No. They, if they want to call you and gripe at you for doing that, they can do that. This is the reason we've done it this way. One is it's part of the guidelines they gave us from the, mm -hmm. from the attorney's firm. But the other reason is because we want these things in place for testing on March 1st. And we want to be able to pay it within 30, 60, 90 days. So. Yeah, you know, it's not like this is the first night we talked about this. No. We voted on this October 13th to get started, and you've seen a couple of lists, and if you're going to tell me we're moving too fast, then you've got to go sit out there with the teachers. My only issue is the calculators. I don't understand why students can't provide a $6 calculator. I guess. Okay, if that's the only thing keeping you from voting for the whole kit and caboodle, we're taking uh. them off right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think we need to add in some IT. So I think we need to look at... Yeah. Okay. I'll entertain a uh, motion for option one. What year? Three or five? Why don't you start with three and then go down to two and go to one? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> option. Brave. With three year? With the three year? 
No, start with option three and then work your way. If nobody can pass that, they're going to do it. Otherwise, you're going to get yeah. off the easy way. All right. Make it hard for them. <laughs> okay. I'm twisting my arm a little bit here. It's option two. Option two. When you did option one, is it for the three years, though, to pay that or the five? Well, he's looking for let's, a let's motion Let's get on one of the options approved, okay, then we'll right, go for the three to five. I move to approve option three mm -hmm. with a $40,000 tech addition, IT. Well, you know we can't pay for that out of here, right? You know I thought we could. Yeah, no, I thought we could. Good. IT. Contract. I thought it could be you can contract somebody contract temporarily, but they're not going to stay here. Contract I mean, training. If Lynette wants somebody to stay here throughout the year, they have to request it. Right. Well, we I, don't, cannot do I don't that. think we need that, but we need something in there for oh, some sure. training. Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. Oh, so you're saying that you're at four. If we can get somebody you said there. option three with 40000 addition for IT training? Yes. Three years or five years? Wait, we're still Let's get to our option first. Well, you said option three. We have a motion, though. We don't have a second. Option three is something all of them. I'll second it. Awesome. Let's be clear. That's. I uh, have a motion for option two. 752 plus 4792. Well, you have a motion on the floor to win. Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. You didn't say anything yet? I know. <laughs> Come on, Melissa. It's a good thing. Yes or no? Somebody say something to this guy. They're waiting on the edge of their seat, Beaver. I'll vote yes. Give it five years. Make a motion for a three to five year. I'll make a motion for five, and that would pay it out about the time the other. Close within a year and a half. It's going to be paid off before the other one, but I don't think you're going to be able to go back. My opinion, because this is reducing our bonding capacity by seven million dollars. By seven hundred ninety thousand dollars. <laughs> Uh, so you were at seven two, you're at six two, and we didn't have enough well, to start. We were seven with. four, we paid the other one off, so now we're down to six five or six six. But you know, anyhow, I'll make a motion for a five year. Okay. Second. Go back up to five years. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Here's five year. All right. And it's then par end thirty seven. Thirty seven dollars. Thirty eight bucks. Thirty seven to thirty eight. A year. Where's the total Way over to the right. Yeah. Well, it is, but then once they do the interest in the election. Well, okay. So that's 66 to 40,000. So 37 to 38 dollars a year. All right. That's the For the five year. And that's about $3 a month or something. And if you go to the three year, it's. 61, 62. About five, yeah, sure. No. Okay. So my my motion is for the five year. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those, aye. those opposed? Okay. I'm going to pay mine on your head. I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. <laughs>